Welcome inside this Purdue Classic presented by Auto Owners Insurance alongside former Boilermaker standout Robbie Hummel. I'm Rick Pizzo. Robbie, we're about to take the viewers, you and I as well, back to February of 2008 when we were both much younger. But before we get to that matchup against Michigan State, let's look at this team heading into that game because a month prior to this matchup, you guys were unranked, you were somewhat unknown, and then in a three- or four-week stretch, you strung together enough wins to make everybody take notice. No, it was, it was a whirlwind season for us. I think you look back at that team in December, and we lost to Wofford. We, we were down 17-0 to against Florida International uh, with 10 minutes to go in the first half. So things weren't exactly going great um, in late December, but started getting some things going. We were able to beat Wisconsin at home. Uh, big win for us. The students stormed the court. We were able to, to knock them off late in that game. And then as we started to get some wins, you could just kind of tell confidence-wise we were really growing and, and starting to, to believe that we could beat good teams. And coming into this Michigan State game, it, it was it was a big week for us. We were up at the Kohl Center. Uh, we're able to knock off a team that, that did not lose in Madison. Yep. And, and when that happened, it was like, okay, we, we can start to do some stuff even this year. And I think going to Purdue, we always thought this team can accomplish a lot. We've got Etuan Moore, who's, who's a great player, uh, Chris Kramer, Juwan Johnson, a lot, of, a lot of talent. But until these two games where it was Wisconsin and Michigan State, I, I think this was really the games where you started to believe, man, we can start to make some noise. Well, because you were the baby boilers. Nobody doubted the talent, but the experience wasn't there to go along with that talent. So there was a lot of potential, but it was starting to come to the front, riding a great win streak, some nine games. As a matter of fact, the last team to have beaten you that year was the team you're about to match back up with, Michigan State. As we take you to February 12th of 2008 in this Purdue Classic at a victory, against the Michigan State Spartans. Reggie Greenwood, officials. Spartans with that size, control the opening tap, keep an eye on the rebounding here tonight. Could be a huge part of this game. Knocked out of bounds. Moore, the freshman guard. There is Matt Painter, his third year. Played for Gene Cady here. A nine-game winning streak. The last loss in East Lansing at the hands of the Spartans. Purdue with excellent man-to-man -man defense. Great pressure on the ball, hand-to-hand -hand combat on the perimeter. That's why they turn teams over 18 times a game. Suits out. Spartans move it inside to Namick. Namick has it knocked away. And on the turnover, it goes to the Boilermakers. Let's hold on here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Spartan basketball. The officials are a little excited, too. And four Final Fours, Brent during his tenure with the Spartans. Three in a row. Last one in 2005. Shot clock's down to three. They got to hurry. Walton in the corner. They're going to violate. Goes now to the Boilermakers on the shot clock violation. Nizzo conferring with Nitzo. Now a chance to look at the baby boilers. They space the floor, precision passing, excellent cutting. They look for one another. Nimick just a lot of humble. Got a jam. One and done. Not even close. And you can see the safeties releasing to prevent the Spartans from getting into a transition game. Kramer is the number one safety tonight. He will not attack the glass at all. He'll turn it over again. Here comes Kramer, cruising for the first field goal. Well, that is the recipe for success for the Purdue Boilermakers, Brent. Stifling pressure defense on the perimeter, the steal, the open court conversion by the Boilers. Young Guns at it again. And the Spartans are struggling, finding wide open shots. And Michigan State has to be strong with the ball. Sutan coming baseline. Knocked away from Raymar Morgan with nine on the shot clock. What a start defensively for Purdue in this game. Brent, Purdue's depth is underrated. They go nine deep. Nine players who play between 16 and 28 minutes a game. So fresh bodies, always aggressive and alert. 
five on the shot now. Here they go again. Down to three. Walton doesn't see it. Another violation. Two shot clock violation. I, I just think the first impression from the first two minutes of this game is, is the atmosphere in Mackey Arena. When it's a big game and you have two teams, we've got the number nine team in the country, Michigan State, coming in here as a Purdue team. We're ranked 23rd. Environment-wise, it, it can overwhelm teams. And, and our game plan coming in with Michigan State has always been the same. If you can keep them off the glass and you can always turn them over, they, they really like to run their stuff. And we've seen it early in this game. If you can kind of deny some passes and make them uncomfortable, you can force them into turnovers. Always a huge key when you're playing against Tom Mizzo and Michigan State teams. This matchup, Brent, very similar to the Boilermakers matchup against the Wisconsin Badgers. A big size advantage for the Badgers, a big size advantage for the Spartans. Kellershot saved it. Sutan is on him. Knights on for Hummel's 0 for 2 now. Lost control. Knights has got it on the turnover. Headman is Lucas. Here comes that speed. And a free throw. Taylor Lucas, the freshman on the line. One following the successful field goal, and he makes it a one-point game. Difference maker off that bench. Watch his speed tonight, folks. So far, I've noticed two things. Size has made a big difference down low, and Hummel just a little bit off here tonight after a spectacular game against the Badgers. Each one more great fake. Nails a two. Not a three, but a two. Well, the shot fake, the popcorn popper, get the defender in the air, one bounce, smooth pull up by Etwan Moore. Traveling called on Morgan. That's the fifth turnover of the game by the Spartans. And something of a slow start for both teams offensively, but at home, Rob, it just seems like you guys not only playing off the crowd, but really feeding off the defense. No, and looking at our defensive just intensity, the way that we're in passing lanes, the way that you're making Michigan State feel uncomfortable when they have the basketball. We've already forced two shot clock violations. And like you said, defense leading to offense trying to get us going. There's certainly some nerves out there. I mean, this is a huge game for us. It's a big game for them. I think both teams feeling a little bit nervous, kind of feeling each other out almost like a heavyweight fight right now. Just about five minutes into this one as Purdue leads it by three. When we come back on this Purdue Classic, Etwan Moore starts to shoulder the offensive load for the Baby Boilers. We pick up this Purdue Classic with the Boilers on top of Michigan State 6-5. About six and change gone in the first half. Etwan Moore would knock down a three from the wing to extend Purdue's lead to 9-5, but Michigan State would respond on the ensuing play. Marquise Gray comes up with a steal and layup to bring the Spartans back within two. As we bring you back to the game broadcast, Purdue nursing a 9-8 lead. Kramer's right with it. Off the dribble, Kramer won't give ground. Kramer seals him up. Raymar slips it to Walton, who scores as he gets inside the freshman. Great look by Morgan to turn and face, see the help coming against that triple team, the give up for the Deuce. Hummel back on the floor now for the Boilermakers. Purdue basketball, crowd wanted a foul. Now we'll see what happens with Grant running the point. Here's Hummel. They put Namick out on him. Grant up over Namick on a switch and drains a three. Hurry game the lead for the Boilermakers. Great lift on that shot by Keaton Grant, a rainmaker. Taylor Lucas dribbles it down to 20. Knights will jump past now to Raymar Morgan. Right baseline jumper. He can't find his shot either. Into Kramer's hands. And now the Boilermakers come back. Grant pull up three. No. Namick. Good clearing of the boards by Namick there. Oh, look at Taylor Lucas get to the rim. At that time, the Boilermakers were ready and they took the charge. Sport athlete played some baseball as well. You see more on the bounce. Had the chance to see each one more at the Nike Skills Academy going into his senior year up in Oregon. Brett, great listener, very coachable, one of the elite players in the country, a great recruit. There's the steal. 
That is the eighth Michigan State turnover in this game. Etwan drops it into Kalashan. Kalashan backs down, Namik left hand, not there. Goes battling for that rebound, a hell ball. I asked if, you know, he feels like his team is, has the grit now. He says, they'll never be as gritty as I want them to be. And open look for Moore, who now has scored 10 of Purdue's 17 points to start this game. You cannot give Etwan that kind of a look on an inbounds pass. This is an 8-0 breakdown defensively by the Spartans, uncharacteristic of the Tom Izzo squad. Knightso pulls it up against Kramer. Battle rebound. Nemec reaches and here's Hummel. Hummel with good speed coming down the right wing. Grant thought about it. Here comes Etwan working the baseline. A runner. Kalajan back with an offensive put back. No. And a foul against Purdue. Matt Painter's turn to be unhappy. Raymar came in here averaging almost 16 a game. Knights of 14. They got to shake the two big guns loose. Well, there's no open looks. Purdue will not allow you to window shot over their defense. Look at Kramer. Get up and pressure. He knows he has help behind him. Traveling is the call on Knightsel. And we're seeing Chris Kramer right now. He, he is custom built to guard Drew Knightsel, but pay attention to how just Michigan State's starting their possessions. I mean, Drew Knightsel is playing with that ball 35, almost 35 feet, almost to half court, not ever able to get into any sort of rhythm. Really tough for Michigan State right now to get a good look. lead a 10-point lead these guys are supposed to be freshmen just like a coach to try to teach after you hit your first bucket of the night at big three do you actually remember I what he might have been yeah. saying to you no he told me he goes i drew that play up for you why are you passing the basketball we're getting you in a closeout situation with a big guy like a marquise gray goran sutan attack the rim because I passed it back and then they threw it back to me and I just shot it because I was like, well, it was for me, but he's telling me to shoot the ball, be aggressive. And the second time you knock it down to give your team a 10-point lead, and so the offense is starting to come, but as we discussed, just as was the case in the first four or five minutes of the game, the reason you're able to do whatever you want offensively is because, you know, right now, Michigan State cannot do anything that they want to do on the offensive side. Right, and it's the pressure of our defense that's really pushing them out. Chris Kramer is giving Drew Neitzel fits on and off the basketball. You see right there forcing the turnover. Kramer, he, a player like Drew Neitzel, he's trying to run off screens. Certainly not the most physical guy. And Chris Kramer just body him, using his size, using his physicality. And, and it really, really gave him a hard time. But how many times have we – and this, this is the perfect highlight tape. Chris Kramer is dominating the game, maybe not in the box score. But if you watch the game, you're saying, man, Chris Kramer's had a huge impact on this game. And so Purdue – now up 20 to 10 on the strength of an 11-0 run when we come back and continue this Purdue Classic. The news gets even better for the Boilermakers. Eight run. Air ball off the three. Hummel saves it. Got it back in the corner. Fires himself. Yes! Oh, Here's Hummel. Want to load Johnson. He's going to take the three on the outside and rattle it in. His first hoop of the night. And it gives the Boilermakers their biggest lead, a 10-point lead. Welcome back to this Purdue Classic presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Rick Pizzo alongside former Boilermaker standout Robbie Hummel. Seen buckets from you and Etwan, some terrific defense from Chris Kramer. We would go on to learn that Jawan Johnson would turn out to be a fine basketball player, but he's basically getting no runs so far against a really big, really physical Michigan State team. Right. We've seen him for about all of six seconds yeah. on this edit so far, and it's just it's a physicality thing. He, he does not weigh enough. He is not strong enough at this time in his freshman season to play against this Michigan State team where they play Raymar Morgan, Goran Sutan, Drew Namick, just huge bodies, Marquise Gray, guys that are so physical. And a lot of times for these Michigan State teams, their best offense is let's miss a shot and put it up there so that our guys can go get it. And that stands true today as well. 
Uh, always have the athletes, always have big bodies, and Juwan just was not ready at this point physically for this game. Let's head back to Mackey, Bren Musburger, Steve Lavin, Aaron Andrews on the call. We pick things up with six and a half to go in the first half, and Purdue back up by ten after that Robbie Hummel throwdown. They can't get anything going. The big two of the Spartans. Sealed up underneath. On the block. Here is Crump. Keep in mind, fresh bodies on the floor. Nine deep. Continuing to wear down opponents. Active. Feet. Quick hands. You know what, Steve? Hummel may be the most impressive-looking basketball player that I've seen and didn't know much about until tonight. I mean, he moves without the basketball, plays defense, runs the floor. Six foot eight, reminds me a little bit of a Bill Bradley, a Dave DeBusher type of throwback in terms of the old-fashioned approach. Lucas hangs. He's been the Spartans' best player by far here tonight. Eight for Tom Izzo, 22-14, Purdue with the lead. Well, Lucas figuring nothing productive coming from Michigan State sets. He might as well take it himself to try and create a playmaker. Michigan State down eight. Two and a half minutes in the first half. Sutan's got Nymek in low. No foul call. Missed on the shot into Hummel's hands. Now Moore gives it back to Kramer who waits for Hummel. Hummel's three. Yes! Oh man. It's, again, defense leading to offense. And, and the funny thing is, you watch this game, the refs are absolutely letting both teams play. I, I mean, you could argue there was two or three fouls on that last play by Jawan Johnson and Etwan Moore. But in a physical Big Ten game, a lot of times we see it today as well. Refs tend to swallow their whistles. And when you're in an environment like Mackey in a big game, it certainly can happen just like it is here. The iron rebounds for the Boilermakers. Big possession for the Spartans. They want to stay within distance. Johnson is fouled by Namek. Johnson will shoot a pair of free throws. You know, one of the youngsters that I think Matt Painter is really relying on is a sophomore, one of the, one of the veterans. He was talking with Chris Kramer. He's a sophomore from Huntington, Indiana. We talked about his athletic ability. Now he is delivering the message to Etwan Moore. More or less a quarterback out there on the field, not necessarily the point guard. Plays good defense. Does some of the little things, and Matt Painter wanted to pass a message on to a couple of players. He's playing safety, if you will. Defense not letting the Spartans get into transition. 29-16 now. It's a 7-0 Purdue run. Kramer picks up night so high. Uh, Coach Painter does an excellent job, Brent, of utilizing his bench. Substitutes very liberally because he has confidence in all nine. Another, Another turnover by the Spartans here. Here's Etwan working with Brent and Hummel. Johnson out the screen. Sutan on a switch. Etwan air ball off the three. Hummel saves it. Got it back in the corner. Fires himself. Yes! Oh, Robbie Hummel! That, that play is a basketball miracle. I, I'm running for a <laughs> rebound that's never going to go there. And it just happens to fall under that rim. It's an air ball shot by Etwan Moore. Hits me in the hands. I throw it to Keaton Grant. And for some reason, I'm not even in bounds yet. He throws it back to me. It never should have happened. It never should have worked. But it ends up being a pretty cool play. And yet, it is one of the plays, and I covered your entire career at Purdue. It is one of the plays I remember more than any other from your time in West Lafayette. Puts it down, drives, and draws the foul. Sutton had switched on him, and Hamill took him to the baseline right away. Purdue has picked up Brent where they left off against Wisconsin. Against the Badgers, they forced 18 turnovers, converted those turnovers into 20 points. Hold on before you concede freshman of the year to Eric Gordon. Great score down Bloomington. These two teams will go nose to nose next Tuesday. But let us keep young Robbie Hummel in that discussion with what we're seeing here tonight. Purdue with an 11 0 and now a 12 0 run this half. Look how extended the Purdue defense is. They're out at half court, tracing the ball. Walton 
crashes to Sotana. Beautiful cut and a great read by Walton on the pass. 34-18, final six. Grant's going to drive, pull it up, misfiring. Picked up by Hummel at the buzzer, fired it back up. Our first look in person at the Baby Boilers. And we are impressed. Let's go to Eric. And so, Robbie, it's 34-18 at the break. Obviously, Coach Painter and the staff, a lot to be happy about. Started with defense. The offense began to come late in the second half. I know you guys had confidence. There is no way on earth anybody on that team envisioned you would be leading Michigan State by 16 at the break or be able to limit that squad to 18 points in 20 minutes of action. No, I, I, I agree with you. We probably didn't think we'd be up 16, but right now you just watch that first half, and defensively, we heard Steve Lavin say it, we have completely pushed Michigan State's offense nearly to half court. They aren't able to get into anything. We're in the passing lanes, the hard hedges. They're so uncomfortable on the offensive end of the floor, and that's led to turnovers, which was able to get our offense really going. And like you said, at the end of the first half, able to find some threes, able to get some things going. We saw Juwan Johnson got himself to the free throw line. But but right now, this, that was like the perfect first half for us. Keep them out of transition. Keep them off the glass. Unfortunately, I think that's going to change here at the start of the second. Yes, when we come back, <laughs> as expected, the more veteran team, the battle-tested Michigan State Spartans, make the run you think is coming in the second half. Also still to come on this enhanced broadcast, we talk with each one more. Purdue leads Michigan State 34-18 after one half of this Purdue Classic. Etwan Moore had 10 in the first half. My partner Robbie Hummel had 13, and Purdue's defense absolutely stifling as the Boilermakers end the first half on a 25-8 run, taking a 34-18 lead into the locker room. And we are joined now by one of the stars of that Purdue win over Michigan State from 2008, Etwan Moore. Uh, Etuan, I know you played 100-plus college basketball games after this one, uh, countless NBA games as well. How well do you remember this particular victory over Michigan State? Oh, yeah, I remember it um, vividly. Uh, you know, it was one of our signature wins, and uh, I know we was talking earlier, and I said, man, all the good games you definitely remember. Those ones <laughs> you won't forget. So uh, even though all the games have been played, man, all the memories that we had in college and, you know, Great games. Uh, I definitely remember those. Each one, I know it was, it was almost it was 10 years ago now, but what's your favorite thing when you look back on freshman year? I'm sure it was probably living with me in the dorms, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, us having, um, you know, us living in the dorms, you know, we definitely had a good time. I trust I tell my NBA teammates and friends uh, all the time about uh, us, you know, living together and, you know, playing with each other. I don't know how much fun it was. Um, but, yeah, of course, my first year, uh, I would say, of course, the most memorable time, even though I know you was joking, but, yeah, of course, it was just hanging with you, guys, hanging with you, Juwan, and, uh, and Scott, you know, uh, you know, he didn't stay with us. But, you know, just hanging with you all, you know, having to come in, um, you know, with four freshmen, you know, all, you know, talented and, you know, a good group of guys. You know, I think that was just one thing that took them to my um, first year. And you guys made it, you know, so much fun and, you know, and on, on and off the court. Each one, I'll ask Coach Painter this later when we talk to him. You know, we lost to Wofford at home. We were down 17 to nothing to Florida International with 10 minutes to go in the first half. Hadn't scored yet. It, did you ever see us maybe being able to beat a Wisconsin team in the Kohl Center or, or a Michigan State team, both ranked teams in the top 10 at home? I ain't going to lie. Well, like you said, at first when we uh, lost against Wofford, I said, Oh, it's gonna be a rough year. <laughs> I, I, I was prepared for the world. Like, oh, well, like you know, this year might not be the year for us. You know, um, you know, things kind of like spiraling down. We went to Vegas and we had some bad losses, but um, I think uh, I think we bounced back pretty well. Of course, like you said, uh, we got the win in Wisconsin. I like okay, once we got that win, I said okay, yeah, now we want to play. You know, they was a great team. They don't lose many games at home. Uh, uh, I think that just, you know, boosted us and gave us a lift. And, you know, we just took off from that. Etuan, do you remember how much you guys relied on each other from a mental, from an emotional standpoint, kind of supporting each other? Because, 
you were so young. I mean, when you're all freshmen and you're all relied on as much as you were relied on in your very first year and playing against veteran teams like Wisconsin and Michigan State, being able to win those games, how much did you support each other, not just running plays, but kind of convincing each other that you could accomplish what you eventually accomplished? Oh, yeah. Uh, we definitely supported each other um, very well. And uh, I think that pays a big tribute to our success. Uh, I think the, off the court, you know, uh, we all stay with each other and, you know, all would hang out and, you know, do fun stuff. So I think when we got on the court, it just translated and it just made it a lot easier because I knew that, you know, if I made a mistake, I knew Robbie had my back. When Rob made a mistake, Juwan had his back. So uh, we definitely counted on one another. You know, we always talk and communicate. It was like, man, this play hard, or you no, know, maybe we need to do more of this or less of that. So I think that's that camaraderie between us um, definitely has prepared us to go and have a great career. Good stuff from Etuan Moore, one of the stars of that 2008 Purdue victory over Michigan State. Etuan, I hope you enjoy the summer, getting ready for the next NBA season. Truly appreciate you spending some time with us today. Uh, yep, thank you. Robbie, as we're about to head back out for the start of the second half, the one thing that you have to know is coming is some type of Michigan State run. No, they're too good. They're too experienced. They're too well coached. You knew they were going to do it. I don't think we thought it was going to be the way it was. It's an avalanche of points. Michigan State gets off to a great start. Honestly, I think we're a little bit tired. We played Saturday. This is Tuesday night. Um, Had a late trip back from Madison into almost Sunday morning. Uh, We look a little fatigued in the second half. But like you said, you knew it was coming, and Michigan State makes the run. Back to West Lafayette we go in this broadcast from February 12, 2008. After Etwan Moore, his running mate, scored 10 in the first part of this game. So here is a young man who is making quite an impression. He was the Big Ten Player of the Week coming off that upset up in Madison. And here tonight, leading the way. Folks, he's got five rebounds. Only Sutan has more rebounds than Robbie Hummel. Remember, Hummel missed his first two shots of the night. Let's see what happens. Kramer on the weave here. Tried to load the post and couldn't turn it over. Neitzel, double, scores in traffic. Good start for the senior. If you're Tom Izzo, you're hoping that jump starts this Spartan squad and gets Neitzel off the snide. His first field goal. Now to Raymar Morgan's turn at the other end. Attacks on the dribble, left hand short, and Namick cleans it up, and the Spartans can put together field goals and start to climb back out of this hole. Here's Walton, Sutan's out high for the Spartans. Here's Walton, kick to the corner, Knightsell's three ball. Not there, but Raymar Morgan now, and both have scored to start the second half. Big second shot for Raymar Morgan, using that size and strength to clean up the weak side garbage. It's the putback. 34-22. Alexander Kramer. Here's Hummel, tough shot in traffic. Sutan, seventh rebound of the night. Here comes Walton, attacking, turned it over. Kramer's got it. Hit twice, steal, Raymar Morgan. No foul called on Walton, and Raymar Morgan from the Walton feed. And the Spartans on a run here early. The 6-0 run, they've scored all six of the Spartan points. Hummel low, Chalazan low, beautiful feed. Good execution out of the timeout, the steal steal. by Grant. Spartans turn it over again. Grant waits for five on five now, and here's Hummel back to it. Here's Hummel. Shot clock winds down toward ten. Shalazan is going to jack a three into Neitzel's hands. That's not who Matt Painter wants moving outside to gun the three ball. Something to watch for. This is a young Purdue team. Turn it over. Grant again, no ball. ball. And Michigan State retains possession. A winning formula. Knights are coming again. Rebound. Marquise Gray. Yes. 
this is just something you can't have happen when you play Michigan State. You know they're coming to the glass. You know they're going to be energized. I'm sure Coach Izzo had some choice words for him at halftime, but we've seen now two possessions where you allow them to get second chance opportunities, and if you're not going to block these guys out, they're enormous. I mean, they are looking to just get a shot on the rim, and those are two possessions right there where we just did a poor job of blocking out and going to get the basketball. Raymar Morgan quiet in the first half. Goran Sutan as well starting to assert themselves here early in the second half. Impressive start here. Izzo might be up for the night. Ball knocked loose by Grant Spartan basketball. Lucas back on the floor for the Spartans. Sutan attacks the lane. Turns on Hubble. Excellent, Excellent jump hook by Sutan. A good delivery in the two-man game. Down eight, and now Sutan out on Hubble. Oh, and a turnover. He wasn't looking. Marcus Green. In just under five minutes, Michigan State has whittled the deficit down to eight, and the Spartans inch even closer when this Purdue Classic presented by Auto Owners Insurance returns. When we left this Purdue Classic, the Spartans were making their run. Down by 16 at the break. You play just four minutes of the second half, and they've whittled that deficit in half. They're now down by just eight. You're a young team. Some young teams are emotionally and mentally fragile. How are you guys handling this run at this point? I really think what happened in Madison just three days before that immensely helped us. We had the same type of thing, get out to a big lead. All of a sudden, Wisconsin started coming back, and we were able to make some shots, hold off their run. I think we drew on that. But also, it's got to be on the defensive end. It's got to be rebounding the basketball. We look a little tired. We definitely look a little fatigued. We're starting to throw some balls away, maybe do some things we wouldn't have done in the first half. But you just got to get get it going back in the right direction, build some positive momentum. As we pick up the action, it's 36-30 Purdue. Just under 14 minutes left to play at Mackey. Hummel will try to end it short on the three. Goes after it, got his own miss, and put it in. Nobody screened him off from outside. No one should know where the rebound's going to come off, Brent, better than the shooter himself. If you have a sense and a feel for your shot, and Hummel wisely follows up, gets the easy deuce. They can pull to within five or four with a three here. Here's their fine freshman, Lucas. Namek got a pick and roll. Lucas likes to keep it and dribble. Now Walt, seven on the shot. Namek. Reigns set shot outside, and it's a 40-35, and sellout crowd a little uneasy here. Brent, I go back to that point. A young team expended a lot of energy, a lot of emotion up at the Cole Center against a physical Badger team this first half. They came out on fire. Can they sustain or regain that emotional energy and adrenaline edge? Tough for a young team to do. Here's Kramer going to work on Neitzel, right baseline. Won't roll in, battle for the loose ball. Namek with great hustle, saves it. Up against the table, Lucas attacks. What a play by Drew Namek. Michigan State has answered the bell, Brent, in every phase of the game. Offensively, defensively, beat Purdue to the punch. Matt Painter. Right there, just a bad offensive sequence for this for our Purdue team. A lot of standing around, a tired possession. Drew Namick makes an incredible play right there and gets it to a freshman, Kalen Lucas, who I think is, is really underrated amongst Big Ten fans. You, you see him out here as a freshman on the road making plays for his team. And, and again, just things not going well for us on the offensive end of the floor. Look at the forced turnovers by the Michigan State Spartans in the second half. Purdue opening up the bakery. The turnovers lead to easy baskets, opportunities. Michigan State to be credited for being opportunistic and aggressive. A runner makes it a one-point basketball game. Brent, a complete reversal. They've traded places from one half to another. A brilliant comeback here by the Spartans. Grant attacks with a driving layup to regain it. 
Keaton Grant, just, just an underrated part of what we did. And, and I think he's another guy. I just talked about Kalen Lucas being a little bit underrated. In terms of our Purdue teams, Keaton Grant made big threes, was a very good defender, and right there stops the bleeding for our team. Here's Morgan inside. Won't stay down. Calazan rebounds, and here's Kramer for the Boilermakers. Grant to Calazan, who's fouled by Sutton. He'll shoot two. And tonight, Izzo has 39 points already with eight minutes remaining in regulation here. I think one of the more remarkable statistics, Brent, is the fact the Spartans have only tried three field goal attempts. Love the chess match within these Big Ten games. There is down low, and one, he'll come to the free throw line as Hummel fouled him, and Sutan was patiently waiting for Raymar Morgan to attack before he bounced it to him. Brent, we talked about the counter, the chess match. This is off the bounce, a precise delivery. This is a play we walk through in, in our in our morning shoot around, and, and we knew they want to get a back door for Raymar Morgan. If he doesn't get it, they're going to post him. And we've talked about fatigue multiple times here. That's a tired mistake by a freshman and myself where I'm just not locked into the scouting report. And I'm sure in film the next morning, I definitely heard about it. A two-point game. We pick things up now. A three-point lead for Purdue with six minutes to play in possession of the basketball. Team on the road is battled back in the second half here. I think Purdue just a tad fatigued, but credit Michigan State with wearing them down as well. Not as crisp in their cuts. Hummel, that pass Sutton wide open. Look on the jumper, put it down on the floor. What, what mid-range players do when they're missing outside, you know, Lab. Put it down. The mid-range game and look at this Mackey Arena crowd. And Grant fouled Naito. I'd say the Pac-10 and the Big East, the deepest conferences in the country, the top of the ACC, when you look at Duke, North Carolina, and Maryland, three quality teams, but the ACC doesn't have the depth of the Big East or the Pac-10. I think Michigan's, the, uh, the, the Big Ten, we're looking at five teams. A long shot, Minnesota. Unfortunately, they don't have the ranked teams coming to their home court here down the stretch, but it can get some quality wins. Money time, folks. We're into that five-minute session. Lucas muscles in for the field goal, and it's a one-point lead for Purdue. A little runner. He's got a bag of tricks. Kaylin Lucas impressive on the road. Raymar watching each one. Good pass down low, and it's Hummel. There's the movement without the ball, Brett. Not only is he sound with the ball in his hands, we've seen that but understands the game away from the ball. John Izzo called the timeout here at 422. The final four minutes of this Purdue Classic when we come back as my partner comes up huge for the black and gold in the clutch. Continue this enhanced game broadcast at a Purdue Classic from February of 2008. Rick Pizzo, Robbie Hummel, we're about to watch the final four minutes. It's still clearly anybody's basketball game you're young. Michigan State has more experience. They beat you about a month prior to this game. But based on what had happened to you guys over the previous month, you felt like you were a different team on this night than you were the night that you lost to the Spartans. Why? Well, I just think three nights prior. You're, you're in Madison. You're at a building where only Illinois' teams with D. Brown and Darren Williams have actually won as Big Ten teams, and you get a win there. That, that can change your confidence and change your mentality. And at this point in the game, there's four minutes to go. You're in the TV timeout, and, and you're going through a checklist. we got to block out. we got to keep them off the glass. Defensively, we've got to be locked into our scouting report. Offensively, get a good shot. Don't let Michigan State get out in transition. You do those things against, these, against the Spartan team, and you're going to put yourself in position to have success. Also got to make some shots at the end of the game. Purdue would do exactly that. Here it is, the final four minutes from Mackey Arena from February of 2008. Can Purdue sustain the energy and emotion, the execution that they had up at the Kohl Center late? Or does the Spartans come back? Each one picks it up. Turn around is on the money for the freshman. Lead is back to three. 51-48 now. That's his first field goal this half.
Raymond Morgan's been very active. Watching the shot clock is a signal. Six on the shot. Lucas on the drive, runs it in. Boy, a nifty blow by the high screen by Drew Namick. Excellent late clock execution. Nice to have a playmaker like Kalen Lucas. Beep, beep. Izzo signals tightened down at the defensive end right now. How about shooting 56% in the second half, the Spartans are, and holding Purdue to 33%. Another example of that reversal. Almost steps out now for the Boilermakers. Each one comes outside and short on that shot into Nitzel's hands. And the Spartans will be looking for the lead now this trip. I would imagine they look to continue to go low. Play power basketball. Sutton screens. And traveling is the call against Raymar Morgan. There is their fourth turnover this half and 15 for the game, lad. Now to the Boilermakers. Add the one pointer. Kramer's going to attack Walton. Yes! And he'll be shooting a free throw. Enzo can't believe it. NBA continuation. I think Coach Enzo has a great argument here. Missed the free throw. Spartan basketball. 53 50. Three point lead. Boy, Coach Izzo just gave Ted Hillary an earful and shows the veteran official Hillary is. Let's him blow that steam off without calling a technical foul. That's the judgment of a savvy vet. Nitzel waits now for Lucas. Lucas comes around, gets inside, kicks over the wall. Kramer's got him, and here's Nitzel. They've got to be aware of the shot clock as they come down inside 10 now. Back on top, Sutan guns it three. Battle for the rebound. Kramer's got it for the Boilermakers. Big rebound. We have got a dandy, Brent. I have to say, this is the best game we've had all year. 144 lab. Both teams utilizing the old dribble weave. Humble, yes! Nails a three ball. And the lead is six. How about this kid? They have missed 11 straight three pointers. And then Robbie Hummel stepped out. The 6 8 freshman from Valparaiso who missed the first game. That's an action that we ran all the time. It's Jawan Johnson diving to the rim. Chris Kramer coming off a of pick and roll. We'd also run with Etwan Moore. You see it. Jawan's diving to the rim. I'm raising right behind. Michigan State screws up their defensive coverage. Kalen Lucas is late rotating. And it's just one of those things where we ran this so much. And it's amazing with fatigue at the end of a game. Things in the scouting report go out the window. They've done a great job defending it the entire game. And then in, one, in the most important moment when you got to have a stop, they kind of fall asleep. And so with just 80 seconds to go as the clock ticks down, Purdue up 56-50. to 50. And Lucas, the ball was hit, so it wasn't traveling when he came back down. Lucas continues on in, and it's a four-point game, 56-52. We're coming down to the final minute of regulation. Purdue spacing the floor, looking to back cut over plays. Remember, they shoot 74% from the foul line. Another part of their arsenal and finishing off opponents in league play has been taking advantage of the charity strike. Hubble comes on out. Seven on the shot. Up firing. Yes! Robbie Hubble! 24 points here tonight! Coming off the big ten. I'm so tired there. I, I, that's a terrible shot. <laughs> that should never I, that go should in. That should never go in. It's a great defense by Goran Sutan. I just kind of jack one up because the shot clock's going down, and I'm too tired to drive him to the rim. And fortunately for us, it happened to go in. Rebound by Moore. Etwan Moore, another freshman for the defensive board, and Grant is fouled by Walton. And Grant will come up to the free throw line. Grant, the fans are feeling it, lad. A coming-of-age game. A coming-of-age week for this Boilermaker team. Now, Hummel, along with his 24 points, folks, he has 11 rebounds. Double-double here tonight. Loose ball. Kramer's got it. This should do it. We'll pull it back to Grant. The Boilermakers. 10 straight wins.
They stay number one in the Big Ten. A statement game for the first time ever. They have beaten top ten teams back to back. 60-54 Purdue. This has been a presentation of ESPN. And so a tenth consecutive win. Another huge win in terms of the opposition that you took down. This one at home. The confidence had to be growing game by game. And you can see how much this one truly meant. Your emotion and the reaction at the final horn here was pretty telling. Yeah, I think we were gassed. It was such a big week for us. You go to Wisconsin, you win at the Kohl Center, you come home, play a very good Michigan State team. And honestly, it would have been such a crushing loss. We, we really played well in the first half, kind of fell asleep there to start the second half, but made some shots. I think really... A huge game for us in the sense that a lot of those young teams, we talked about it, they lay down, and we didn't do that. We really punched back, came back, got things going in the right direction again. Just a huge win for our NCAA tournament resume to kind of make up for some of the, the shortcomings we had in the non-conference season. And we can't discuss and break down exactly how this game played out without some thoughts from the head coach as Matt Painter joins us now as we continue our look back at this 2008 win. All right, Matt, let's start in the first half as you limit a really talented Michigan State team to less than 20 points. You knew your team was good defensively. Did you have an idea heading in that they could be that effective defensively against that opponent? Um, you know, not really. I mean, obviously, we, we really outscored Wisconsin in that game before, um, you know, that week. But we had put together... Um, a pretty good run. Obviously, you mentioned winning 10 straight games, but we had such troubles of piecing things together because of our youth and non-conference. Um, but we were getting better. We were improving. Um, you know, we obviously had really good talent, you know, we, but we were obviously really inexperienced. And, uh, but we, we continued to get better. Um, Chris Kramer was a lockdown defender, um, and we really had good defenders across the board. Um, but like I said, they were freshmen and sophomores. And anytime you have that, they're all, you're always going to have some breakdowns. But we were improving, um, you know, like I said, and just kind of a special time for us to be able to, in one week, you know, knock off Wisconsin uh, at their place, which was unheard of, and then to be able to, to beat a, a really good Michigan State team. I'm going to go big picture. We, we lost to Wofford at home. Trailed Florida International 17 to zero with like eight minutes to go in the first half. <laughs> At that point, did, did you ever think that we could possibly beat Wisconsin in the Kohl Center and then come home and beat Michigan State? Uh, I, I didn't think we could win 10 straight games in conference play. I think that's a, a, a tough achievement uh, to be able to play well in one game with that group. Yeah, I thought we could do either one of those things. Not when you're down 17 nothing to Florida International or you get beat by Wofford at home. Um, I didn't think that, but we also had bright moments. You know, we beat a really good um, Louisville team in Indianapolis, um, and they had two lottery picks on that team, and, and, and we had some had some pretty good wins. Um, you know, leading up to that week. So I, I think when you when you look at that week, that was really special for us. Um, but when you look back the non-conference, we were getting better and, and we were growing together, and uh, that's what you have to have sometimes as a young team. You got to fall down um, before you really make some strides. Do you remember anything about your halftime speech? We didn't come out very good in the second half. I wonder if you remember what you said. <laughs> now, sometimes I get it flip flop. My, my halftime speech needs to be my pregame speech. And, um, but no, I, I think it's a kind of a byproduct of youth. Sometimes when you play, play really well and you hold a team to 20 um, and you have a good first half, especially coming off um, a really good win against Wisconsin, now you, you come out and you just think it's going to happen right away. And it's just, it's part of competition. It's not like, we were playing a bad team. We were playing a really good team, one of the best coaches ever in college basketball. Um, you know, he's in the other locker room, too. So you know they're going to come back and have a fight. And uh, it, it's, it's part of competition. We've seen it so much. You guys cover games all the time. But when you see two evenly matched team, the team that normally gets behind is going to make a run at some point. It's so great to go back as far as we go back for this game, Matt, some 10 years, and to see the environment at Mackey that night, and then we've seen it every night since. I know some of these games have to run together for you because you've coached in all of them, but it seems like that environment never changes. When you guys are at home against a quality opponent, the lift you get from that home crowd is evident through the TV screen from a decade ago. Yeah, and yeah, that, that jumped out right as I saw a couple clips there. Um, about our crowd. Our student section's always been great, but uh, our fans have been very consistent through the years, just not in my tenure, but obviously in Coach Katie's and before that. And we have some great basketball fans at Purdue. 
Coach, I know the rules have changed, so this is going to make this question maybe a little skewed, but watching the game today, it was so evident that we tried to get in the passing lanes and hard hedge everything. I guess looking back, yeah. what, what would you try to do if you could do anything differently today defensively just because we were so good on defense throughout most of this game? Right. Is there something you would do? Well, I think we had the personnel to get in the passing lanes. We, we haven't had quite the personnel um, to be that aggressive, and we've had bigger guys in the post, so we've either downed or iced those ball screens and tried to keep them at home. Um, I definitely would have downed ball screens with Jawan Johnson. There's no question about it. I probably, in hindsight, would have you switch ball screens. Um, I don't know if you would like that or no, not. No, I don't want that. Um, but, but, I, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but where we had trouble when people got past our aggressiveness with that crew um, was when they could handle our pressure. When they handle our pressure, now we got more rotations. I think you'll remember playing Wisconsin you know, the next couple years and how we gave up those threes to big guys. That's what we lived with. And I don't like living with that anymore. I, I like guarding the three-point line better. I like keeping shot blockers closer to the rim. Um, we've done that with A.J. Hammonds. We've done that with Swanigan and uh, Isaac Haas and just tried to keep them closer to the rim and better rebound position, um, do a better job of staying out of those rotations. And then with our foreman, with Vince Edwards, um, we've really tried to switch those ball screens and, um, and then try to come in and help a little bit. So those are probably the only uh, major differences I would change. Most amazing thing to me, Coach Painter looks the same. You look like you were about six years old back in <laughs> 2000. It's a miracle I was able to play in the Big Ten that season. Uh, hey, Matt, I just saw the clip, and I, I do not look the same. So uh, that was a nice comment, but I, I just saw the clips, and um, Rob just had a different haircut. He, he had to get that figured out so that he could uh, – you know, grow in his uh, older years at Purdue. I also weighed about 190 pounds, too. Soaking wet with yeah. changing in your pocket. <laughs> Still hit some big shots. Matt Painter, good stuff as always. Appreciate you helping us look back on that 2008 victory over Michigan State. All right, thank you. And that will wrap up this broadcast of this Purdue Classic, an enhanced game broadcast after the Boilermakers win over Michigan State February 12th, 2008 a black and gold letter day from Mackey Arena in West Lafayette.